Hello everyone. Welcome to this first lecture in the introduction to uh, critical thinking, uh, logic, and argumentative writing course. Uh, this short lecture will just be sort of an introduction to the topic of critical thinking uh, and will be sort of the beginning of our thinking about what it means to believe well. To begin with, there's a special relationship between our beliefs and the truth. The whole world is filled with lots of information and we are rational beings, rational creatures, rational animals that are able to recognize or understand and communicate uh, that information that is out there in the world. Now information can be quite useful but it can all, and, and it can be quite important, but it can also be dangerous or deadly depending on how it is received. Information can make you rich, right? If you're able to predict the stock market, for example, or it can make you sad if you find out that your mother has passed away. It can make you accomplish a task. It can help you, right? If you have the information of an instruction manual and it can also send you in the wrong direction, right? If you have bad information, you have the wrong address. Now, we use information in lots of different ways. Um, we write it down, we talk about it, we theorize about what information is correct or incorrect. Uh, we use it to mislead one another sometimes when we lie, and we assess it for accuracy. Now, under most circumstances, we want the information that we have, or we find the information that we have most useful when it's accurate, right? We want accurate information in order to be able to use it, in order to be able to act on it, rather than inaccurate information. Sometimes inaccurate information may be helpful, right? Where we know like certain inaccurate information would help someone's emotional state or something like that. Um, but in most cases, it's actually more very important that we have accurate information. We need to know the correct directions to get to where we're going. We need to know the truth about the dangers of the current pandemic virus situation. We need to know the actual probability of certain events uh, that you know will occur in the future so that we can plan for what's likely uh, and what's unlikely to happen. Now, beliefs are ultimately the cognitive or mental states that we have that express our attitudes towards whether or not certain information is accurate or inaccurate, right? If you believe if, you, if some information, if you think some information is accurate, you believe it. If you think some accurate, some information is um, is inaccurate, then you disbelieve it. You believe that it's not true. Now, like if you believe that the sky is blue, basically that means that you've taken this sort of attitude towards this bit of information expressed by the sentence "the sky is blue," and you t that you know that attitude that you've taken uh, towards that information basically says that that information is accurate. Now, supposing that we want accurate information because it's useful and our beliefs are ultimately the things that we have that are related to um, the accurate information, the uh, information that we think is accurate enough about the world, then we should really want accurate beliefs, right? That seems pretty simple and straightforward. But how do we go about gaining accurate beliefs? Like, this might seem sort of obvious, but it's not actually that clear cut. The way that we gain some beliefs is straightforward and obvious, but not the way that we gain all of them. So some forms of information are really straightforward. They come directly to us through things, through easy methods that we are pretty sure are reliable, right? So you just, you can just look at the apple and see that it's red. Uh, you can see that the stoplight is green and then know that you should go because of that. Um, you can hear the doorbell ringing or feel your phone vibrating, right? These bits of information, you know, that someone is calling you or that someone is at the door, um, these things are rather straightforward because they come to you through your senses. But for some information, it's more difficult to determine whether or not that information is accurate because we don't have the same kind of reliable method or reliable process under which 
we are able to recognize the accuracy of the information. So things like information about the future, right? How are we, how do we know what's going to happen? Uh, information about the distant past. How do we know about, you know, what happened at the beginning of the universe or merely what happened uh, in prehistoric times? Information about things that are extremely small, right? The microscopic things about uh, information about things that are far away, right? Distant galaxies. Information about the nature of reality, whether or not God exists, whether or not reality is the way that we, that it seems to be. Information about the afterlife, whether or not there is one, whether or not there are such places as heaven or hell, or everything just kind of ends. These bits of information are out there, um, but it's much more difficult to determine whether or not any particular bit of this kind of information is accurate or inaccurate. Now, when we believe accurate information, we ultimately have true beliefs, right? And um, But information can be accurate or inaccurate, right? If it's accurate, it leads us to true beliefs. If it's inaccurate, it leads us to false beliefs. But there are lots of ways that we receive information, and these different ways of receiving information have different sort of modes of accuracy or inaccuracy, right? In perception, sometimes you can be deceived by your senses when you see an optical illusion. So you need to be sort of aware of how reliable your perception is, your senses are in that situation. In communication, sometimes people lie to you, right? That's a bit of information that's coming to you in a bad way and that's you know you then have this information and if you choose if you choose to believe it in that situation you're gonna have a false belief but not necessarily because you know you didn't do your due diligence you just believed something that someone told you that when, when they were lying to you or somebody might have bad information themselves right and then neither of you are in the wrong you just you just end up believing something that's false because the other person told you it was true um, or you may mishear someone you may mishear what someone said. That's a, a way of coming to have some information that's actually inaccurate because they didn't say it in the way that you thought you heard it. If we ultimately seek true beliefs, we need then to be careful both about the information we receive itself and the way that the information gets transmitted to us. And so ultimately we're going to need to think critically and deeply about both the nature of the information and how that information is received to determine whether or not we're doing a good job at checking for accuracy. So what beliefs in the end should we have? Now, suppose that our goal is to believe all of the true information that's out there. This might be, you know, a good idea because you think like, oh, look, it'd be great to have all of the true information. If we had all of the true information, it'd be really useful. We would know everything. Now, what do you think the easiest way is to believe every piece of accurate information that there is in the world? Small hint, it's not actually uh, going to be prudent for you to go out into the world to try and determine whether or not each piece of information is accurate or inaccurate in order to try and believe all the accurate information, there's a much easier way to do it. And that is to just believe everything, right? Everything that could possibly be a piece of information, just believe it. Say, yep, I think it's true. Guess what? In that way, you would turn out to believe all of the true things. If you believe everything, then you also believe everything that's true. But that's not a very good idea, right? That's not the kind of thing that we want. It's not the sort of beliefs that we should have. If we believe everything, sure, we believe everything that's true, but we're also going to believe everything that's false. Why shouldn't we believe everything? Well, if we did, we would believe contradictions. We would believe that the sky is blue and that the sky is not blue. We would believe that the ground is below our feet and that it's not below our feet. I would believe that my name is Kyle and that I, that I am not Kyle. <laughs> we would be frozen in these beliefs that we have because we would believe everything to be true and everything to be false in a sense. Like we'd believe all the true things and all the false things at the same time. And 
that wouldn't allow us to do anything. If I believe that there's milk in the refrigerator and that there's not milk in the refrigerator, I don't know what to do if I want milk. So maybe instead we shouldn't really believe everything. What, what we should do is something else. That doesn't mean though that we should believe nothing, right? Believing is ultimately rather important. If you didn't believe anything, then you would be equally as frozen as if you believed everything, right? You, if, you were, if you didn't believe anything, then there wouldn't be any real information for you to act on. If I didn't believe that, you know, if I just don't believe that there's milk in the fridge and I don't believe that there's not milk in the fridge, well, I have the same problem, right? I, if I want milk, I don't know whether or not I should go to the fridge because I have no idea. I have no beliefs about the fridge. Belief and action are ultimately very closely tied together, and we need to believe some things in order to be able to act at all. So where does this leave us? We can't believe everything. We can't believe nothing. What should we be believing? Well, how about we try to believe only the true things instead of just all the true things, right? Um, now, if we try to believe only the true things, this gives us sort of two guidelines to live by. Both the rule that we should believe everything that is true, which is the first thing. We, we, we do want to believe all the true things insofar as we can, but also to believe nothing that's false. If we take both of these together, then we can try to believe only the true things. Believing only the true things involves believing everything that is true and nothing that isn't true. Now, it may seem at this point rather pedantic to sort of draw this distinction between believing all the truths and believing only the truths. But I want to sort of be clear here for everyone that this is part of what it is to do critical thinking and philosophy. Part of being pedantic, being very clear about what it is that we mean, what it is that we're saying, and what it is that we're thinking is very important. There's ultimately a different logic to the word all than there is to the word only. The word all incorporates all kinds of things, where the word only incorporates things while restricting to a specific subcategory. And here it becomes rather important. If we're worried about what beliefs we should have, and it turns out we can't believe everything and we can't believe nothing, well, if we're worried about the truth, it seems like the kinds of things that we want to believe are only the true things. Now, whenever you believe something, you're always going to run a risk when you believe it that you're believing something false. And if we were trying to avoid believing falsehoods, there'd be another quick, easy trick to accomplish this goal, right? You just believe nothing. That would solve that problem. You'd never believe anything false if you believed nothing. But just as we said before, that's a bad idea. We need to believe things in order to act in the world. If you believe nothing, you can't do anything, right? So how should we go about believing only the true things uh, while trying to get as many, you know, as possible? Well, because it's risky to believe something, you might think, well, what we should do is we should impose some sort of strict rule a strict rule on the bits of information that we believe um, where we need that information to be backed up. We need it to be secure. We need it to be certain in some way. We need it to have a foundation. We need it to be based on some undeniable evidence or something like that. And if the information lacks one of these characteristics, then we shouldn't believe it. Now, this is certainly a good rule of thumb for deciding what we should believe. Uh, evidence that some information is accurate is really good reason for believing that information. But now supposing we take on this sort of restriction, how much evidence do we need to believe something? And how do we know if the evidence is any good? How certain does the evidence have to be uh, for us to actually believe the original information? If we take on evidence that's more information, do we now need evidence for our evidence? What ultimately is the standard by which we're going to decide when enough is enough, when enough evidence, you know, lets us know that, yeah, it's okay now, you can believe 
this belief, this this information, and think it's true. Ultimately, belief is risky because if you believe something that's false, you're you know not going to be able to act on it. But lack of belief is risky as well. For every bit of information that's out there that you decide to not believe, just as you know when you risk believing falsehoods, if you don't believe something, you run the risk of having failed to believe something that's true. So now we kind of have this two-edged sword. If we believe something, we run the risk of believing a falsehood, and if we don't believe something, we run the risk of missing out on believing a truth. So what, in the end, should we do? What should we believe? This class, critical thinking, logic, and argumentation, is an attempt to answer that sort of question. What should we do when it comes to deciding what to believe? There's a set or a bunch of steps, a process, for determining, for deciding what kinds of things we should do when, it come, when we're confronted with information and have to decide whether or not we should believe that information or not believe that information. The answers are not exactly as straightforward as you might think. There are a set of bunch of rules that ultimately need to be followed for recognizing when some information supports other information, for thinking about what evidence counts for and what counts against certain things, and for when an argument that some belief is a good one and supported as true is really you know, a bad argument or fails because it, it fails to meet some logical requirement. In this class, we're going to be looking at a bunch of different ways that one can think about what it means to do a good job when it comes to believing the truth, whether that has to do with following the arguments or understanding probabilities or induction. Um, we always are going to be risky in, in our beliefs. We're, we're always going to risk believing things that are false. We're always going to be risking failing to believe things that are true. But just as in all sort of worthwhile endeavors of life, it's best to try to do your best. And so in this class, what we're going to be learning really in the end is what it means to do well, to try your best when it comes to believing, what it is to believe well.